Dette er det første møte vi har med Norges Særforbunds sportschef Rigo de Nois, som er i Japan, leder norsk norske i OL. Og vi skal begynne med regelmessige sendinger hver dag efter serasen. Det kommer til å bli en gang mellom ett og to på ettermiddagen. Um, og da skal Rigo summere opp uh, inntrykkene fra dagens serasen. And let me ask you first now, Rigo, um, this is the day before the um, laser or the ILCA and the, uh, the uh, RSX um, uh, are going to start. What is the feeling among the Norwegian team? Um, actually, it's, it's surprisingly uh, good uh, in that sense that uh, <laughs> this morning or actually this afternoon, uh, Andre sort of sat next to me during lunch and, and he said, Rigo, I'm, I'm feeling sort of chill. And, and that is like a, a surfer way of saying that he's feeling relaxed, I, I guess. Um, and, uh, and, and I said, don't worry about it because other people will, will, will already be super hyped up. And energy management is, is one of the most difficult things during a regatta like this. I mean, it's, it's, yes, it's the Olympic Games, but it's even... Uh, yeah, a lot, lots of other things that, that are playing a part as well, and especially the, the acclimatization and, and the amount of energy the heat uh, is taking that, that is amazing. That, that's a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of energy taking there. Um, and, and Lena, um, I had a chat with her as well, just uh, at dinner, um, where she, uh, she, she sort of told me, oh, uh, I'm, I'm finally, uh, finally getting some, some tickles. Um, and I said, well, that's perfect. Um, that, that, that's a form of energy. Um, as you know, Lena went to, uh, to the opening ceremony. Um, that was, uh, was quite a process of, of making that decision. Um, and and I, I think together we were able to, to find a very good way of make that as, as efficient as possible, especially logistic wise. It was a bit of a challenge, but we managed to, to get the, the, the sailors uh, there in a very safe bubble with our own car. Um, and, uh, and with the help of Olympia Toppen, we were able to stay in our bubble as long as we could. And we were at home at, uh, at 12.30, uh, meaning that they could sleep uh, where others were still stuck in buses and at strange places and stuff like that. And that's also the reason why, why I guess many of the, of the other nations didn't show at all uh, during the opening ceremony um uh, basically because it's 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 a dangerous in the sense that yeah there are is some COVID issues going on um and we um um yeah uh, yeah yeah it costs a lot of energy uh, an event like that and, and an opening ceremony and if you have a race pr pretty slow on over pretty short after you, you want to be on your on your top of your game Fortunately, we were able to do that as efficient as possible, and I'm, I'm really confident that, uh, that both uh, Lina and, and Andra are on top of their game tomorrow. Uh, Herman uh, is now sitting with Anton, uh, talking through the last, uh, the last details of a, a small training that they had today. Uh, completely different character, completely different history, uh, not, not so much to be compared with the, uh, with the other two. Uh, but he's feeling strong. He's, um, he's, he's having fun. I actually caught him uh, about an hour ago, just before dinner, when he was sort of uh, fighting with little bungees uh, with Anders, and Anders was chasing him over the hallway. So that's, uh, that, that's for me a sign that everybody is still in a, in a good place uh, starting this event. And his breathing uh, issues uh, have been sorted out? Well, if he can chase and fight with Anders Pedersen, I think it, sh it should be good enough for now. I mean, you never know how that's going to it's gonna, it's gonna work out during racing. But he and Anders are, uh, are, are a happy couple. Uh, that, that they make a sport out of it to, uh, to dress up for dinner, um, having the same clothing on uh, all the time. And, and sometimes that, that the choice of clothes is not always the most, uh, yeah, elegant in my opinion but they they make a sport of it of, of having a really good time together so um it it's it's where it is and and uh, we've 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 worked as hard as we could to to get it under control and we'll just have to wait and see when the racing actually is going on maybe after two or three days how how we manage to to control that what kind of conditions uh, can we expect uh, tomorrow 
Yeah, that's a good one. Um, of course, um, as Olympic sailing or sailing in general uh, requires, is that during training and before a regatta, you will never get the conditions that you have during the regatta. Uh, I'm here now since, um, uh, what is it, June 10th or July 10th. Um, and um, we have had nothing but a, a, a light onshore gradient. Um, and then a, a thermal on top of that uh, during the day. Um, sometimes with a little thunderstorms and sometimes not. That, that has continued until uh, today. And tomorrow uh, we're going to start off with the northeasterly, um, making it uh, still a, a day with a, a big thermal, but with a completely different beginning. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how the timing of that thermal development because the, uh, the northeast will die and at one point shift into a thermal um, how that's going to pan out so it looks like we're going to start out uh, with with some seabree stuff then today uh, we heard that typhoon number eight is uh, luring around the corner meaning that uh, uh, probably around when, no, sorry, uh, Monday or Tuesday, we can get some decent 40 to 50 knots winds um, when that typhoon is predicted to be as, as it, on its closest. Um, and uh, in the approach, we will we'll also get some days uh, of, of, of 14, 15 knots or whatsoever. So we'll have to sort of, uh, yeah, be ready for everything. What is the upside um, or the upper um, wind limit for the regatta? Uh, that's class specific. Um, for the NACRA, it's around 20, 22 knots. Um, for the fin, it's a bit higher. Um, so that, that, that is per class different, but it's, it's almost in the range as from 20 knots and up. Okay. So how does the sports director feel on the evening before the <laughs> well, the sports director is actually in a happy place uh, right now um we had uh, almost a a a perfect uh, preparation in in the sense that logistically um everything was there in time uh, un, un, untouched uh, by any damage or whatsoever um, and, and we had 90% of the, of, the, of the base camp uh, ready before the sailors came. Um, then the sailors had to also move their hands a little bit to get all things ready. So it's, it's, it's yeah, I can only say things went as planned. Uh, all, there will always be little things um, that, that, that come around the corner. As for instance, Andrew Funemark, comes up to me out of the blue and he says, where are my contacts? And I said, what do you talk about contacts? I was talking about COVID context, and, but he meant his contact lenses. Uh, and it turned out that he forgot to bring them. <laughs> so today I had to use all my resources to, uh, to make sure that, uh, that Andrew has some, some contact lenses that he can use tomorrow during racing. Um, so yeah, that, that's my life. And I managed to do it. Um, so that, that's good fun. Yeah. Rigo, um, I keep my fingers crossed uh, and so do all our readers for uh, tomorrow morning and uh, we'll follow the races as we can uh, in early morning our time and uh, I, look forward to, I look forward to speak to you again at uh, one o'clock uh, in the afternoon uh, tomorrow. Yeah, thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, same here. I'm, uh, I'm hoping uh, that uh, everybody crosses their fingers and send a little bit of a uh, Good, uh, good speed to uh, to to Japan for our, our the Norwegian sailors. Absolutely.